You should also think about if you want if you're looking for jobs with your words. Okay? So that's one thing you should also do. Because they do they quite like If you want chapters about jobs, that's also a good thing. Right. Here are our collated principles. Okay? And so we've got this collated principles again. We know why there's lots of different mention from lots of different books of these kind of collated principles. Why is it? Why do I think it's just being a being a, a wizened old character who's seen the seen the world and seen life and kind of shaping the wildlife? Because people like to make new terms for some books. Yes, people like to make new terms for some books, that's why I'm on it mostly. It's very unless you see that there's only one here, like, you know, there's only, I mean, quite strange, but helpful is one concept that uh, only, is only mentioned in one spot, one book, so that's all. But yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, so I think that it's all that. You can, you can disagree with me at the end of the course, disagree with me all you want. Okay, that's good. They know it's because they've got new insights. What was it with the issue? So we explain it on the stage. Yeah, so so I think it's really just about you know inventing the world. But but it might be that people have new ideas, new thoughts, new papers as uh, as life goes on, and they can discover more things, and so therefore we integrate those things into the, into the literature. We can see how much literature doesn't change because all the stuff in Xerox, right? All the all the stuff in that bytes, bytes things that they were talking about, they meant to be saying something that you negotiated by half the ACI. Today, okay. We've got some other ones here: motivation, uh, memory, vocation, minimalist, minimalist design, um, self-image. That's an interesting one. Why self-image is an interesting one? How would I link self-image here to something that we were talking to just we were talking about before, with the different platforms, operating platforms, operating systems? Yeah. based on its characteristics. Uh, last week I was talking about uh, saying how maybe designers and uh, graphic designers and artists uh, would go for um, a Mac because it's got that self-image and it's got a good image or that kind of thing. And if I was a developer, I might go for Android because, you know, I want to show that I have a technical degree. Oh, the Apple table is really, you know, this is now Apple there. These are reference in your notes, we're not going to go through with those very much. Um, but here, the, here are the pot of principles that I think these distill down into. Okay? So these are the principles. And there's no, I can't understand any better than it is. I've, I've been thinking about how to how you remember this, but I'm just have to see it. Alright, quality, aesthetics, flow, pleasantness, and satisfaction. So why does quality matter? <coughs> You know, we all take each other for granted, quality matters. Why? Who's read Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? We might have some insights, yeah, some people do. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Anyone there? What did you say? <laughs> you didn't even bought it. You are a man of character. Because you did buy it, you know, you know, so long you get my own. Huh? You stole it. <laughs> even better. You were good. Yes, so here we have one that's not even a PDF. It's not even the, the ripped off version from the. Uh, oh, no, Caltech. It's out of Caltech, I don't know if I've been in This one is the next. This one's actually raw. Well, 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 yeah, so it's not to you. So, uh, there we go. Okay. Quality. Why does quality matter at the end of this? And when I say quality, I'm talking about quality not in the build, although that is something. You know, you could argue that open source stuff often feels more, has more quality because you know that people are going to look at your code and you don't want to see like your car some kind of hack, right? In the, in the worst in the worst possible sense. If you're contributing to open code to an open source project, you don't want to be like, yeah, I'm cool. But you care about what the other developers think. So you can have nice code, not crack code. Okay, so technically you might think that's that's the way 
body, but quality when we talk about um, aesthetics, when we're talking about um, affective, when we're talking about some emotional design. What do we mean? Why is it important? Do people think quality in aesthetic design or in emotional design is important? Do we think it's important? Do we think it's important this side? Yeah, yeah, we all think it's important, yeah, the back. Okay, so we think it's important, but why then? It should be easy, we should just go say what it is. And we should also know what feels like quality. Quality makes you smile when you look at the device. Quite intangible, don't know how we're going to test it, but you're right. Yeah, quality makes you smile. Smile when you look at the device, right? Do you think all that's good? Yeah. Sure, it's that graph with like flow and quality and something else. I can't remember, but yeah. The higher quality it is, the better. The higher, well, that's more about, um, yeah, that's a rational. <laughs> yeah, that's so. The flow uh, is is and the really close to the other that now. So quality, well, wow. it's a link there. Okay, so what else? We know that makes you smile when you look at it, but it's kind of that's difficult to test there. Eh? What else? People want to feel about it. People want to like what they want to try and do. 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 Yeah. So people believe they're entitled to great and more than they are. So if they believe that something in front of them is of the best quality and it's, it's the same for them as it is for somebody who might be learning quite a lot of things that kind of thing. And people are more inclined to feel more engaged in the product. Very good, because you might need to write that down and get that, send back the email, I'll stick it on the slides. Very good, so it's, you know, with the quality, it's also about how people feel about themselves, how they can link the quality of the item to their self-view, <coughs> their self-image. Also, if they've got something that's a quality item, somebody else who's maybe earning a lot more than them, or, have, or is in you know, kind of, uh, has some other qualities which they find to be desirable, then they're linked by the product. You just have to buy the product to be in the room. You don't actually have to, you know, do anything more hard than buy it. Okay, so yeah, that's right. So same, why, so exactly the same, why, how can I make a link about that kind of quality self-image and buying into this thing, that's nice because it's across different things that we've done, how can I make a link about that based on yesterday's announcement? What want to take some specific reasons, yes. I guess the Apple Watch, I used to buy a free thing so I want, which is effectively the same kind of quality unit, but with a like, slim strap where you can get 10,000 pieces of all at once. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. You've got these ten thousand dollar watches. I mean, to me, you've got to be a real dumbass to buy a ten thousand dollar watch for the old suit in like a couple of weeks. But you know, that's how it's quality. No, it's not quality, but it does link. The idea that there is a link between the quality. So I'm trying to say, right? It's, right. It's, it's well, this is about it's, we are talking about aesthetics and aesthetics. That's true. This is about aesthetics. It's a link. But it's also about self-image, right? And whether you're buying into this set. So quality is also something that they're saying is this quality item. Ten thousand dollars they're saying you have to pay for quality. But you can't, you know, you can't do what. Okay? Tell me what you're speaking about now. If we were to link the if you were a thought manager, can't you say I can work out how this is? Jeremy Clarkson, that's what your head is. <laughs> the thing that I think is that it's bizarre that it's that ten thousand people sign up to a petition to get the door off back. Hundred and fifty thousand. Racist, racist bastard. And he's going to die. That was a YouTube video. Jeremy Clarkson, I'm telling you, we're here. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, it's not Jeremy Clarkson. Okay, so we do have to hear that quality. Yeah. I was going to say, um, people want to feel like they've got like a money's worth on. Money's worth, yeah, people like, what, 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 they've got the money's worth out of something, so quality, you can say that there's a quality product, then quality allows you to charge more because you would pay more for quality. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else thinks, you have one, but you have one, I'm not sure, when I'm talking about this one, it's too handy. Okay, good. Okay, good. 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 Good.
Okay, well, so let's pin our aim. The statics. How do we measure the statics? If I wanted to think about the statics from last week, who are the key people I should do a reference or I should read? And you did three times. Three, two strange names. Strange, normal names, actually, normal names. Yes. Want to start with that? One of my contacts, I see. Lavian Krasinski. Okay? So these are the guys you should be talking to, you'd be thinking about when they're looking at this aesthetic design. Is it aesthetically pleasing? So how do we know whether something's aesthetically pleasing? Does that also make you smile when you see it? Yeah. Why makes you feel? How it makes you feel? How it makes you feel? How it makes you feel? If you think that's based on something, is that, what is that based on, the aesthetic? Is, does anybody have the same aesthetic? No. So it's based on something else, isn't it? Self-image, what we think about ourselves, what we think about it. Yeah. I like fictional stuff. I don't like the words, you know, Victorian quickly, crap. Well, other people love all that stuff, right? Because they probably want it to be goodbye. But the house is good. Yeah, but it doesn't mean it's mild. What? The biggest thing is. It's more personal, so it might give you like an interior photograph when you buy a house in house or watch. Because that's not something that makes you smile. What about, okay, what about, so say, uh, what, what about a beautifully and excellently ex 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 designed coffee? Yeah. That makes me smile when I see it every morning. Yeah, but that's, so because that's quality. Yeah, well, it's, it's also, you say it's quality, uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the good, it's good what happens to chat because uh, this is exactly the kind of stuff you're going to have to be talking about with people out there. They have different concepts of what all this stuff means, how it mixes together. I say that the aesthetics of a pot, of a coffee pot, the quality is, it's just a piece, it's not stainless steel, it's aluminium, so it's probably going to give you reasons. Uh, I feel like you know, if I use it enough, because it's really good to do the puzzle to me of it. Um, so, because it's not, it's not so much steel. So, and it's, it was quite cheap, but the design is just classic. I love that design, yeah. It's kind of espresso pot, I'm the coffee, I'm the, I like using it, I like its tactility. Blah, blah, it's not, it's Yeah, what I'm saying is that the quality is really with the design, and the yeah. aesthetics is really with the material. Yeah, maybe that's right, with the material. But do you not think that aesthetics comes also in the first, so yes, I'll come back to this, let me just, yes, go. I was going to say, can you kind of make the difference between quality and aesthetics? Something like, if a child does a drawing, something of quality that that child has meaning to you, like if your child or your niece or something, then you find it pleasing because they've drawn a picture of you or something and you like it, but it's also quality. Yes, so yes, yeah. so I might, I, might, I, might, I might put that to pleasantness. It might be pleasing because it's your kid that's drawn it, or some child you know, or whatever, or one, sometimes you know there's those uh, elephants that draw this with their trunk, that's why I'm just thinking about it. But yeah, that's right. So you've got that. So the interesting thing is that, well, anyway, in the first year, we, we were the only course that went and did a field trip. Right, it cost some money for that to So we all went to the gallery. And everybody had a personal tour around all the different artworks by some artists who then talked to them about these things. Okay. So then we stopped doing that, but maybe the, the best plan is to go back and do that, right? For next year to go out. I don't know whether that would be more useful. Going on a on a trip around the uh, Manchester City Art Gallery for two hours with uh, a number of artists who tell you about them that will explain what they think about these things. Because they're quite the way for it, right? Designers and artists aren't. So do we think as software engineers we're necessarily the best place to make some of these choices? So, but not all. There's a tendency that the more the more knowledge people have in a certain specialism, so this is related to all of you, the more knowledge people have, the more understanding, the more expertise in a certain specialist area, the more they think that that gives them the ability to be an expert or to, that they're giving you matters on some other unrelated and unspecialised area. Okay? So you often find people with PhDs spouting about lots of other different things because, you know, they think they're right about these things, and they're not. They don't listen to anybody else because, huh, you know, they, they're an expert. Yeah, on a tiny little thing. Okay. So 
that's what we have to think about as well. You have to know when this is beyond your understanding, not understanding, your ability, if you like, or when you think it's better to, for you to go outside and think, well, actually, I'm not going to be this stuff, and I want to get somebody to do it, and okay, to do the effective stuff. Because I don't really know. The iPod, the original iPod wasn't designed, you know, it was designed by the biometric kind of design. I can't buy the technology to do it. And it was, there, was no, there was no user input to it. It was just, this is my vision, I'm having it, that's how it should be doing. Okay? So, we have to think about all of these things. Now, there's a number of, we're running late, to ask for um, There's a number of principles that, we want, that I'm going to go through, but these are the sound, these are the bottom principles that I think we can go into pretty well. Um, the other thing is this. Now, what do we think about satisfaction? <coughs> yes. It can be influenced. So, I, I might have an iPhone and I'm like, yeah, it's great. And someone who might not have an iPhone, they might, oh yeah, that looks good, but they're not having, you're kind of just following a trend. Yeah. So. That's right. So, so satisfaction, and all of this also relates to, relates to the actual item, but it also relates to their self-image, how we're doing at any particular point. We also know that if you big up something and say, this thing is really great, this thing is really great, more, most people will feel satisfied with it more than if you don't say anything about it. Okay. So that's why they have these trickle releases of technology so that people get excited or people tell them they should tell them you should be excited, you should be into this item, because then you will feel more satisfied once you've purchased it, even though it's so nice. Okay. That's the way that our brains work. So there's a thing to that. But also with satisfaction, you'll also find that if you're going to not do something on a product, you need to provide an alternative worldview. Mind share, it's called. Mind share. So, for instance, if you're Apple, if you're, say, I want to build a competitor to Apple, if I try to compete with Apple and make another kind of Apple iPhone, it's not going to work because there's already one of those and they've got this quality kind of thing. So, how can I do it? I can say it's cheaper, that's probably not going to work because it's not going to buy into a lot of this stuff. But if I can say, well, this is the developer, this is the proper technology. Then it's a tomato which about very well it has to be taken in there. That's another mind share that you've got within the technical okay. So that will increase satisfaction because I brought it to my community and I'm now going to have Okay, so we've got all these facilitate questions, how do you facilitate stuff? And I'm going to go through a few for quite a long time now talking to you about these, but I'm going to skip. Okay, so questions about design for quality, exhibits, current best practice, fit for purpose. So all these things here are really, are really, are, are what all you can do, but they won't give you, there's no very, no real good way of testing this. You can ask people what they think about it, how it feels, how it feels in their hand, how it tactile, tactile, feels, etc. The only way you can do a lot of this aesthetics is to take what is already known about aesthetics from other areas and try and incorporate some of those in the design process, in the design rules. But to actually try and measure whether it's quality, it's difficult to know, it's difficult to do. You don't measure it so many or well, not whether it's quality, but whether people find it to be quality. So we know that people find metal cases, these bush metal cases, to be a better indicator of quality than those plastic cases. They may not be. This might break the two drop on board, or might fly, who knows? But still, that's what people find it to It's not about quality, it's about perception of quality. Okay. Aesthetics, again, it's about perception of aesthetics. So, is the design beautiful? How do I know? You know, how am I going to measure that? How am I going to know that? If I go to an art gallery, there'll be things that, that, will, that, that other people will find beautiful, and I find absolutely boring, and other people find it really, you know, Things that I like, they are paint. That's the way it goes. But all of this kind of stuff. Will the user perceive aesthetic quality? Is the design current? And does it convey the desired image? 
Okay, so that's again nothing but that self image. Flow. Well, we know about flow. Does it try to move you from, from point to point in the interaction? That's a that's a difficult thing to know. Is there a defined beginning and a defined end? Also difficult to know. Is there a bounty flow? Is there a bounty flow? Are you telling stories when you're going through some kind of story that we're to Yes. Yeah, is, it, is there a story associated with it? Now, in, in a lot of, for instance, in data science now, there's a big, uh, there's a big component that's talking about data storytelling. People don't understand data unless you tell the narrative. Data needs a narrative to have impact. Okay? So you need to be able to tell a narrative about the data such that individuals who are not experts can understand that data. Okay, so that's kind of a data storytelling approach. Okay, and that's what, that's what is quite big now in, in the um, visual analytics and data analytics. How do you tell this story? Okay, unpleasantness. Ooh. Is it pleasant? See, I don't really like pleasant. I don't like pleasant things like that. Pleasant seems so wishy But anyway, that's one of the principles that we've been looking at. I suppose the difference with pleasantness is the concept of pleasantness might be a shared idea of pleasant, but whether you individually find it pleasant is the thing. So, you know, I like lots of people like interesting, different interesting things, interesting artworks, interesting, uh, uh, yeah, things that they find interesting, they don't consider, consider it just to be pleasant. But the vast majority of the population wouldn't. So that's just the that's just something that you need to consider that pleasantness is actually about the person, not about this shared understanding of what pleasantness might be. And then we've got the satisfaction. Well, it's the old tangible reward. We'll get the, we'll get to this stuff in the next bit when we're talking about um, when we go on to talk about gamification, phonology, uh, tangible rewards, all the tangible rewards. So that's something that people are often thinking about. Okay. As I said the last time, I think one of the things that's missed out, all the things you've seen before, are things that are easily isolated from uh, the literature. Okay, you can see it. You call them different terms if you like, and you see in the notes you'll see all of these things are put together into a specific term. Okay. You can call them, you can call them any term you like. This one I can't see as being um, in any of those things. So the, the principle that I think is the most important is the personality, because it can wrap up all the other stuff. Are you buying into the personality of this thing? Okay. And if you are buying into that personality, what does that then say about you? What does that personality confer on you? Okay. That's the case with lots of uh, design products. You're buying a designer label, not because of anything to do with the thing, but because you're buying into the personality of the designer, of the, of the brand, and all the things that that brings with it. Yeah, all that mind share that, that, that comes with it. So this, can, well, this is really why I think that uh, linked cars works. Well, I say that it works, yeah. Why user interface designers and uh, aesthetic designers can't understand the user experience design, just can't understand it. It's, it's, it breaks everything else. It's so bad it breaks everything. But people buy into it for its personality, I think. If you can come up with a better idea, a better thing that, that um, Apart from uh, you know, people see the normal kind of stuff, you can think of a better thing to explain why we just can't break all of the design principles that we're told should should be there, and still um, gets all of the hits it up, and still on the biggest sites to be hit. Or actually buying the car, not the finished car, not actually the it. So, it's So we're back in 10 minutes, that means uh, six minutes past, and we're going to then start off on the new bit, which will be um, engagement, the principle of engagement. Um, this will be the last part of the, um, we're not all going to get engaged, but that's not what I'm saying. Uh, it's not one of those mass cop things where you know, you're walking here all the uh, more single and you go out to uh, you know, all, uh, all the places. Um, so, it's principle of engagement, and um, this will be the last part of this, this is the last chapter, it's part of the work, it's about the principles of building this book that you can try and get into the build, right? Okay, so the next bit, next, next week we're going to be looking at uh, the final
final part of this, uh, the second lecture will be the engagement and also the research to do with um, how we do evaluation and validation. Okay, so come back here to the uh, seven minutes past now. And um, yeah, we'll get going. Last yes. 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 um, So last week we were talking about principles of effective experience. This is part two uh, of that lecture. This is the more tedious part of that lecture. Uh, so there we go. Um, first of all, though, let's have some uh, topic questions. So, who wants to give me an example of why accessibility is so important? What does accessibility help for? In yeah. Access and experience. Yeah, it's like saying, what's computer science? The science of computer Yes, access and experience. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we use different devices to show accessibility means that you can access something in both in laptop or in tablet or in mobile. That's right, excellent. So, um, it's generally about making sure that you're device agnostic. So if you're uh, most people use the personal device as a surrogate for themselves, right? They buy a, a personal device and they the only ones that need it to be set up for them. And that's exactly the same as say access technology um, is set up for, for people with uh, disability. So therefore, if you're actually if you can't rely on what kind of device this information is being delivered on, then you have to think, well, it's got to be a device agnostic. Be usable by everyone and then by every device, right? Yeah, okay. That's good. Um, and we call that, well, if we, based on this mobile device issue, if we're um, hindered by the device or the context of use of that device, the environment in which it's used, what kind of impairment do we call that? <coughs> yes. Situation. Excellent, yes. Situation impairment. So that's what, we, so that's what we're calling it. Uh, what the community calls it if we're hindered by technology or the context of use of that technology. Um, combinatorial impairment. So what, what does what does the what does the other world, not this the world we live in this room, what does the world think combinatorial impairment is? Yeah? Old people. Old people, the bastards. That's what they think it is. Right, so who wants to give me a view of regarding combinatorial impairment? Because the new one coming for the family, I'm thinking that this might be a awesome, but even a raw question. Your exam might be creativity, synthesis, yay. Yes. Challenges by presenting things to people who have got multiple disabilities. I think the thing that, that, that I say here about combinatorial impairment is that normally it's about multiple low level disabilities as opposed to high level disabilities. So higher level disabilities might be complete blindness and completely deaf, right? But um, low level might be that you've got some hearing loss and you've got some sight and vision issues, right? But together then you've got one, like the value of one impairment. So yeah, okay, that's good. So what do we think about, um, do we think combinatorial impairment is right, or would we rather say older people? Seniors, would we rather say seniors? Who would say seniors or older people? Oh, good. We're all scared of them, that's good. Okay. Um, pick an interface bridge and describe it. So tell me, an interface bridge, what am I talking about? What's an interface bridge in this context? Uh, what kind of, what language are you most familiar with coding in generally from your first year days, shall we say? Nobody knows, they're not familiar at all with any kind of coding in computer science, coding, <coughs> so what the hell is that? What are you talking about? Coding, yes. Yes, so with the Java Accessibility Bridge. So what does the Java Accessibility Bridge say do? Could you, could you describe what the Java Accessibility Bridge could you describe what the Microsoft Accessibility Architecture is? <coughs> Could you describe 
describe what I accessible to does. No? No, yes? You can all describe that. Because that would be a good thing for you to do. What's the relationship between effects and that? I get that we're only two weeks, just two weeks, two weeks, two weeks away from the holidays. One week. So you're all, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're all crazy, you're all tired, you're all, you're all the issue, you're all like, you know, it's a Thursday, you get to go Come on, though, to the Wednesday, they'll be coming after this, but, well, me anyway, you know, I'll be happy life, but so I'll be going for awesome, this and that curve, oh, yes. Um, who's been for this and that curve? Let's see, yes, these two guys have been for this and that curve of their own regard, and they know it's awesome. Yes, pretty good. In the last week, after the revision session, I'm not paying for it, but I'm going to go with the all cup and see how awesome it is. Fancy to get three curries rice or what you want. As much chili as you can eat. Okay, so come on, let's have some life about you guys. Come on, let's go. Relationship between effective and accessible design. So, what is the relationship? Be nasty. You've got to be nasty, I'm so excited. It's all just in your head. It's effective and accessible. It's crap, it's all about accessibility. The other stuff telling us it's effective. It's not really, that's just what you're saying. What is it? What is it? What's the way to do it? Yeah. The more accessible it is, the more effective it is. The more accessible it is, the more effective it is. I could say that they're one and the same thing. It's just that I'm choosing to use effective because it means that it's an easier message for software engineers to understand. I might also say that I'm choosing to use effective because of the principles, we know that accessibility, core of the principles, but footstool are the other the principles that I'm looking for that, right? So it's effective principles. So what are what are the five main principles of accessibility then? That's generally a popular question just to make it easier. What's the four main principles of accessibility? Yeah. So those are the, so think about the question, so those are right, or what's the one, right, really effective. But for accessibility, there are four, just so that you know there's a difference between them. So what are the do you know what the accessibility ones are? Um, no? It's all right, you don't need, I mean, you know, this is just so that when we go out to the outside world, the people will actually say, well, accessible, you know what the hell they're talking about, why is not what I'm telling you? Four. It's four. P O U R. What does P O U R stand for? Four. Give me the first one. Somebody. We've already heard it. Visibility. Can we perceive it? Okay. What's uh? Operable. Yeah, that's right. Operable. So you can see that perceivability is directly related to sensory. You see that perceivability is directly related, related to the different kinds of human senses that are available. Why? Is it perceivable? Why does gas smell like it smells? Why does normal natural gas that you set fire to in your house and you try and burn your you know, bar, ten, you ten barbecue and all this kind of stuff in your house? What is that gas? Why does it smell? They add it so we don't kill ourselves. They add it so we don't kill ourselves, right? So that's a, a cue that's about perception. I was thinking about synthesis questions and the first few years of thought, I might join that piece of what you might be thinking with perceivable piece of thinking in the exemplar. My kind of my exam. As you can see, it's about perceivable, perceivability in the real world. Um, but also, I might link, if I wanted one a bit less than that, I might link the courses, the bit strands of the courses together. Perceivable seems to link to, it's about perception, seems to link to sensory impairments seems to link to the different kinds of the three senses. So that we 
Yeah, 
Downstairs. I mean, you've all been to the machine room, right? You've all walked past the machine room. Why is the machine room downstairs? Do you know why the machine room is, is where it is in the heart of the building and how it functions as part of this building? No? You know what the, so the machine room is the heating system. So in the day, these machines consume so much power that they put more together and then they pump the hot air around the system, which is why the uh, aircon in, in, in the building is so terrible. It's because the original aircon. Well, the original heating system was pumped hot air from the computers, from the system, right? Because they were so, so powerful and they had so much energy. Who thought this? So the mindset of the people in the 60s was, with, you know, originally, that IBM said, we're only going to design six or seven great massive computers. Why would you want one of the guests? Because no one wants that. Two, we don't need to make them easy because only the experts can use them. And then if you buy the experts can use them. Three, we've already made them easy because you can use the keyboard now. You don't have to use the punch cards. But we've got people now. So they have to get over their, you know, their kind of thoughts about who's going to be using it, what's the context of these why too. So I agree that you know now we think everything's constrained. Maybe it is. Um, but I also think that <coughs> we need to not we need to not think like that because they 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 saw opportunities for development in lots of different ways. And you could also say that interface has got a lot of got bio. Firewalls, you've got all these embedded, you know, embedded and visual systems. So, different kind of interfaces, virtual reality. Okay, what else do we think about Xerox from? We've got one person who thought it's kind of okay, and okay, everybody else thought it was okay, it's kind of okay, but they didn't know what it was going Yeah? Um, so, a lot of people who are over 65 don't use computers. So, um, it'd be useful to understand the thought process that went through the design of the star. And then you could draw those principles and apply them to over 65 so you could help them to use technology. Very good, a bit of original thought there. Computers aren't really used that much by people over 65, so if you're trying to get people to use computers, these guys did get us all to use computers. So, how did you do that? And could we trans are those lessons transferable? Some might be, some might not be. It's a good place to start. You might miss these. Um, what else do you think? Was it easy enough to uh, understand the different principles, the uh, different ideas of how they did the testing? No? Terribly difficult. Okay, no? Okay. What about the concepts? Do the concepts that they came up with in this bite article um, uh, for Xerox Star, what about the design concepts? Are they, are they still about or not about? They're still about. They're still about. Talking. I know you're talking. Talking with 
it's important because you need to think. I mean, he was really thinking very broadly about what the user experience was. Okay? And that's something that Eli should be thinking as well. What is the user experience of this? Okay? So, what you need to get into the mindset of the people who are going to be building the software for. And this is a key, key, key important part. Alright, so we've had enough of the style user interface, and you're all not very talky, talky, talky today. So let's go for the boring bit of the aesthetics, where you can just be designed over here. I've got a film. There's a film later on, a six minute cartoon later on, just to keep it, keep it ready to go, so don't worry about it. A six minute cartoon. Um, oh yes, thought works, I keep saying this all the time. Remember, thought works coming in on the 22nd of April for their thought works 11 o'clock lecture. And you should be here and um,